Welcome back to The Extra Point. I'm your host, Luca, joined by Adam and Ian. And this weekend, we had a great weekend of football, the NFL divisional round, a lot of great matchups. We're going to start off with the Jaguars and Chiefs, where the Chiefs won 27 to 20. What were you guys' thoughts from this game? I think overall, I think it was the first kind of, we had a bit of a scare early, obviously, with that Mahomes high ankle sprain. We'll get into that a little bit later as we're going to be talking. Also getting into some AFC championship, but overall, Chad Henney coming in clutch, great playing that backup role. It's always good to have you know, the backup quarterback that can come in and help you kind of play that insurance role when your starter goes down, even when it is an elite player like Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Travis Kelty, 14 catches, helped him a lot out too. I don't think we, can take, we take, can't take a lot away from the Jags. Great season overall. We look at what the disaster was with Urban Meyer a year ago. I think that just first-year coach Doug Peterson, former Philly coach, I'm going to maybe upset a few Giants fans here. Ooh. I think Doug Peterson should be coach of the year. I'm sorry, Giants fans. Jaguars were in a worse situation than the Giants were last year. And we're pretty much in the same spot, both teams. If we go just based off that, I think Peterson's coach of the year. Ian? Um, to basically to go back to the Jaguars and Chiefs, I thought it was a phenomenal game. Um, both teams did great. I thought it was um, pretty stupid that Mahomes went back after getting hurt. I mean, we all saw his ankle get rolled really badly. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that he was hobbling, you know, giving the ball to the running back, you know, trying to go back into coverage and pass. Um, he really should have gotten that taped way, way earlier than, than when he got it taped. Um, with, but Trevor Lawrence, I, I don't hate Trevor Lawrence. I thought he did great during the game, but obviously there's just going to be someone way better. And um, Chiefs, Chiefs went out better, 27 to 20. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he couldn't put it any better, better way. Again, I thought the Jags were going to keep this game pretty close. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they're a legit team, and they're yeah. going to be a team that's going to have to be messed with the AFC for years to come, especially being the AFC South, which we can all agree is very bad right now. Mm -hmm. um, but the Jags had a shot. I mean, at the end of the game, down by 10 points, they're in the Chiefs' 10. They throw a, a pass to running back Agnew, who fumbles the ball. That was all. Oh, oh, yeah, there there were times where, where he really should have, you know, he could have done better than that. And that he guy has such a good ball. game as a returner. Yeah. had so many great returns. Mm -hmm. It's just that last That's play. But listen, this is an experience for his Jags team, and they'll build up on oh, it oh, with oh, years yeah. to come. But let's transition to the next game. This might be a little sensitive to Ian, our Giants fan. We're going to talk about the Giants-Eagles game, where the Eagles, let's be honest, just totally demolished the Giants 38-7. to Ian, I'm going to let you start with this. Yeah, let me vent. start. Go okay. Ahead, let you vent. Um, reiterating what, what, uh, what you said about what, whoever his name is, irrelevant Dable, to me. The Bull. The Bull? No, not the Bull, the other coach, but the Bull, <laughs> the dog, is first of all, he won NFC Coach of the Year, which is true to his name. He's okay. one of the, in my opinions, one of the greatest coaches right now, just because he was able to take this team that was doing a quarterback sneak on third and nine near their end zone to in the playoffs, which is astonishing. Um, Danny Dimes, Dexter Lawrence, Thibodeau. They also played great, and I think because, you know, DeBolt is a new coach, we're going to go back and we're going to learn from what, okay, let's see what we did wrong this season. We'll put it into next season. All right, so he, I, we heard Ian here talking Giants back, so we're going to talk a little bit more kind of in the middle. It was an Eagles party. It, was, it kind of fell over at 14-0 just when, obviously, Eagles defense coming in six sacks, interception, 268 rushing yards. That's definitely a big one. 112 from a guy I don't think many have expected, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. And then uh, another one, so fun stat, Boston Scott, I think, has had like 15, 16 touchdowns in his career, 10 against the Giants. Can add another one to the, against the Giants. So uh, I think uh, Boston Scott is the Giants killer and is just very bad against the other 30 teams in the NFL. So I know he lives in a Giants fan's head's rep phrase. Yeah, so. he, definitely took, he definitely has something personal against the New York Giants. <laughs> totally can agree on that. But going into this game, again, I thought two division opponents, we saw it with the Bengals and Ravens last week that, listen, the Bengals are miles better than the Ravens, but mm -hmm. they kept it close. I thought this game would be a similar thing, and I actually thought the Giants were going to win, um, which is hard for me to say as a Cowboys fan, but a guy <laughs> called a spade a spade. Um, but I was totally wrong. I mean, first, Jalen Hurts, there's a lot of question marks with his shoulder, how healthy yeah. he was going to be. He looked totally fine. He looked, totally fine. he looked comfortable running the ball. He wasn't sliding yeah. as much. He looked fine and yeah, healthy. Yeah, I remember uh, in Spain, like, two plays. He had a run play. That was a good run play. Next play, just a 40-yard dime. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any issues there with that one. No, absolutely not. And then the Giants, it just showed that, listen, offensively in the wide receiver position, yes, they had injuries. They're missing pieces there. They struggled. They didn't have a single receiver at more than 60 receiving yards, which is an issue in a playoff game. You want to mm -hmm. at least have that one guy that's dominant. Um, this is something that the Giants will improve, but Eagles just got the better of them on this day. So let's transition to the next game, which 
I think was supposed to be the game of the week, yes. the matchup we all wanted to see. It was the Bengals and the Bills, and the Bills just laid an absolute egg. Bengals beat yeah. them 27 to 10. I mean, guys, like, did you expect this to happen? With the weather, I almost kind of did. Because obviously, I know we're in Buffalo, it's Bills Mafia country. We got the snow coming down, but what's, what's the Bills offense Achilles heel? Their running run. game. Cannot they run they the cannot run. run the football. Guess what you gotta do when it's snowing? Gotta run the football. Guess who the Bengals have that can run the football? Mr. Mixon. Mr. Mr. Mixon, Mixon. Samaj P. Ryan. Those two guys alone, they kind of just took control of the game because guess what? Bills can't run the football. So that's kind of what it is. Also, nice job, I thought. Secondary did a great job containing Josh Allen. And then obviously, from our boy, last year we came on here, called him Joe Shiesty. 236 yards, two scores. Bengals into the AFC Championship game, 27 10. Um, I just thought that maybe the snowy conditions would alter uh, Joe Burr's performance. <laughs> <laughs> but he did very well. Um, I was rooting for both teams, actually. Um, just because I support the Bills, because they're a New York team, but also because I like the Bengals. Um, I will say that Josh Allen definitely could have played better. Um, like we were saying before, their run game isn't that good, but they do have some great, you know, re wide receivers like, uh, yeah, I'm not thinking of. <laughs> Diggs, Diggs. Stephon yeah. Diggs. Yeah. Stephon Diggs. That, I was thinking of whole, Trayvon, that's a story I was thinking for of Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, yeah um, he was getting upset at Josh, and basically 27 10 was a score I was not thinking of. I was thinking it was going to be a really close game. Um, and it's kind of, it saddens me a little because I wanted to see this, the Bills win just for DeMar. Um, that's my take. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, you mentioned thinking that the weather was an advantage for the Bengals. I thought the Bills, they played in so many bad weather games this mm. year and previous years. I thought it would be an advantage to them. But like you said, you need to run the ball. And when your quarterback, Josh Allen, he had 26 r rushing yards. If he's your leading rusher, that's, that's a problem. A problem. <laughs> uh, again, a he's problem. a beast at running the ball, but that's a problem. And also, we're not having talked about their lack of defense. I mean, again, Jordan Poirier got hurt. Von Miller. Von Miller, Miller got hurt Von earlier Miller. on the season. Tredavious White got hurt in this game as yeah. well. Obviously, those are big blows, but this that's defense awesome. is just it has not been clutch. Last year against Kansas City, 13 seconds left. They right. couldn't yeah, hold yeah. the Chiefs off, and they end up kicking a field goal. So this defense definitely has to improve. It makes me think, and this is a discussion for another day, has the Bills' Super Bowl window closed? Who that, knows? That's one for another day. That's we'll one for that another one. day. We might bring that one to you next week. So let's transition to this next, the last game of the weekend. It's going to make me really sad. Uh, it's the Cowboys oh, against the 49ers, where Brock Purdy was absolutely sturdy and led the 49ers to a 19-12 to 12 win. Guys, is this just what you expected, another Cowboys choke job? Mr. I think uh, I'm not surprised. I feel like it's just they're the Cowboys. I feel like they lose every year. I'm sorry. They just they can't do it. Mike McCarthy's not really the elite coach that they need to be able to get that team going. Obviously, two interceptions from Dak, not going to get it done. The loss of Tony Pollard, that's not really going to get it done. I think it was just that. And then, uh, as you said, Brock Purdy was 30. Yeah. Uh, I will say that I don't know who, who's done the Cowboys dirty, but somehow they have a hex. They have a hex that they just, they just lose in the playoffs. They choke so badly. Um, but this was a game to watch. You know, both teams did great. You had uh, Mr. Irrelevant, more like yes. Mr. Relevant, doing amazing. You had uh, Micah Parsons, he did great on defense. You also had Nick Bosa, I, I believe he did really good. Uh, you know why? Question mark? I will say that they, 49ers are definitely going to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to talk about this in a little, quick, little bit, but I agree with you. Um, this, again, New Year, same Cowboys. Mm -hmm. yes. I've expected this, and this happens every year. Um, I got to give credit to Brock Purdy. It's the first time we saw him get rattled earlier on in the game, and he right. responded well. Um, Cowboys, like you said, Adam, Dak Prescott's turnovers were still a yeah. problem in this game, as they've always mm -hmm. been. Um, then let's, that last play, what in the world what, was that? What were they Listen, doing? I, and my take Not on that. Not a bad idea, just horrible execution. Terrible Why execution. Why do you throw the slant? I, to someone who's covered. Yes. I mean, I, I, I understood what they were trying to do. You know, they didn't have any linemen because they wanted fast guys to just ch keep chucking the just ball back and forth. Game. But you... you First of all, you put who would you put? They put Ezekiel Elliott and you got snapping, bulldozed. who got bulldozed, which was just a terrible, terrible idea. Um, then Clark, they threw it to Mike a guy Clark that Clark. was def that was covered. Yeah. So I didn't think it would end that fast, but it ended. It yeah, fast. that was sad. Now, really quick, we're just gonna talk about the predictions, the really ones. quick. So first game, 49ers, Eagles. Who you guys got? I got Niners. I'm sorry, Eagles fans. Don't want to do this to you. I just, I have a natural disliking to Philly fans. I'm sorry if there are Philly fans. I know we got a lot in this area. 
Eagles can be, I feel like, while they do have a great team, the Niners kind of have everything. They have the pieces together. And I think if Brock Purdy stays sturdy, Mr. Irrelevant is relevant. That's an X factor for them I have in this game. I think Niners take care of it. My final score, San Francisco 27, Philadelphia 24. Um, I just, like I said before, 49ers are definitely going to be Super Bowl contenders. Uh, the Poverty Eagles are just going to get blown by Nick Bosa. And they just have, a, they have an amazing, de they have an amazing <laughs> defense. So 49ers, 31-28. I agree. I think 49ers are going to win clean sweep. Uh, I think difference is first. Eagles cannot defend the run, and mm -hmm. the 49ers are very good in the run game. So I had the 49ers winning 2017. And to conclude really quickly, AFC Championship, Bengals, Chiefs, who you guys got? I got uh, my boy Joe Shicey in the Bengals this one. Mahomes ain't 100%. We look at what happened second half last year, that AFC Championship game. Bengals defense, I feel like, is now better than they were last year. Like, we're not making those Eli Apple jokes anymore. So I think Hold if there's on. improvement, the X factor I got for them in this one, not their wide receiver one, wide receiver two, Tyler Boyd. I mean, you're be, that wide receiver three, you got those two elite receivers that are going to be covering Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. The, the matchup for him is going to be Jalen Watson. I mean, it's a game that he should be able to just kind of take over and really kind of throw that uh, Chiefs secondary into a mess. My final score, Cincinnati 24, Kansas City 20. Um, I will say that both of these teams are going to, you know, they're going to do everything they can to get to the Super Bowl. But I believe that... The Bengals are going to destroy the Chiefs again. Not as much, you know, but I just think Joe Shiesty. And, but also looking at Mahomes, he's also looking healthy too. So I will say Bengals 20, Chiefs 17. All right, simple. I'm going to keep it super simple. Burrow owns the Chiefs, so Absolutely. Bengals are going to win 24 to 20. That's going to conclude this segment. Stay tuned for more on the Extra Point. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. If I could go back and change it all. If I could go back, I would. But I can't. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. Touchdown! Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Wait, why does my face look like that? There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to The Extra Point. For this segment, we're going to be talking about the NBA All-Star Game for this season, as there has been a little bit of a format change. It's a, little, it's a little thing, but it could go a long way. So they're moving the draft from a week before to an hour before the actual game. Uh, so the team captains will be drafting, and then they're going straight to the court for tip-off. So guys, what do you think of the change? I think it's pretty cool. I mean, coaching already doesn't matter in the All-Star game. It's kind of just do what you want. You know, seeing these half-court trick plays just oops the entire time. It's, it's a fun game. That's how it is. I mean, I kind of like this idea. It's kind of like a playground style. Like, I want you and pick you and boom, boom, boom. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, back to what you said, Jake. I, th I think uh, it gives that uh, recess type of yeah. middle school, you know, because the All-Star game it was always 
a casual, fun environment. So rather than hosting it on uh, TNT a week before, which is what they did last year with Kevin Durant and uh, LeBron James, ha you know, have them all line up on the court, you know, shoulder to shoulder, yeah. and just do the draft like yeah. that. I mean, I, old school style. I think I think you could get some really good reactions, not from the fans, but also from the players mm -hmm. standing there. Because when was the last time a player yeah. has ever, like these NBA oh, professionals pick me, pick me. have been just standing there? Oh, I hope they pick me first, <laughs> you know. Oh, I hope I'm not last, but I will. Who do you think will be the last one picked? Oh, what I mean, what uh, was. that's a tough yeah. one, right? I, mean, I think the first guy picked Kyrie, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's who the captains are. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. like last year <laughs> yeah. with Durant. Now one of the oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I need some size. Give me Rudy Gobert. And LeBron <laughs> on the other side is cracking oh, up. Geez. Shaq and Ernie in the studios. You got to think that NBA is more like a reality TV no, show is. than it a is. sport at this point. It yeah. It's just drama. It's like it's the sports bachelor. entertainment. It's like yeah. WWE yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, I, as much as I do like it, like you guys have mm -hmm. pointed things out that I really wouldn't, didn't think about when it first happened, but I do kind of like the, the selection show. You know, I like... Just watching the players and no, what's going fun. into it's their fun. minds instead of like, I want Kevin Durant, I want you know James Harden. I like why they they calculate, even if it's just, oh, that's my boy Chris Paul. I like, don't think it's really. I think that's what it is. It's no, I know, but I'm just saying I, I like that yeah. aspect. But there are other uh, are other aspects of the All Star Game that I don't like, and we were talking about it before the fan voting. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know guys like Bam and Abayo, you know, aren't in the top ten. Mm -hmm. Derek Rose is. Derek Rose has been in the fan voting every year since you know he's been drafted into the league, and the fan voting does have a significant impact. It, even though it's not totally determined from fan vote, it's still a major factor. And as much as I like getting the fans involved, I don't like it. I agree. Fan voting sucks. Mm. To switch sports, if we go back to MLB, there were years where the Royals just stuffed the ballots, and they had like six players in the All Star team, and it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to get your fans involved. You know, fan votes should count for a little bit, but yeah. there has to be a line that you draw. Clay Thompson should not be near the top. Derrick Rose should not be near the top. There's players. Derrick Rose shouldn't be in it. You know, <laughs> the point. There's players who deserve All Star games who get bonuses on their contracts for All Star appearances, and they won't get it because fans would rather vote for a guy who plays 30 games a year. Like Zaza Pachulia when he was the number yeah. one vote a couple of years ago. Well, I think you bring up a good point, and I look at it from this perspective. Think of. Uh, Think of uh, New York City, right? And how right now Kevin Durant leads the most votes for um, All Stars, and Naturally, he will be of captain. Yeah. New York City, one of the highest populated cities in the country, so of course he's going to get the most votes. He's going to get more votes than a guy like Shea uh, Giltress Alexander in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. yeah. and then then that ruins the proportions of the fan voting, right? And a guy like Kevin Durant, I mean, you know, plays phenomenal, great career, whatever. You're injured. You're probably not going to play in the All Star game. Actually, but Charles Marks came out saying he will be back before the All Star game. I'll believe it when I see uh, it. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm trying to, he did it last year. No, he didn't right. play. Right. Right. And he was a captain and he was injured sitting on the bench. No. That should be going to Giannis or Tatum if I were to choose There's to be. There's one more player you should mention. Or, 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 no, we're not going to mention him. He's leading the no. East in scoring. You can no. mention him. No. He, oh, has the most, he has the most 40 point games this year. You can mention him. No. It's but, not going to hurt you. But on the West. <laughs> On the West, it should not be LeBron. LeBron had his sign. Luka Doncic should be the captain on the West. Oh, and yeah, I will yeah. exactly. It should so be. that's the that's the um, fallacy. Should really be Luka the, and Giannis the two best players in basketball. Stop it. Stop it. Giannis is better stop than Tatum. It. It's an argument for another stop time. It. Giannis is better than Tatum. Stop. I'm not gonna stop it. This oh, is where that's the show a goes down. That's that's a debate for another time. But the load of nonsense <laughs> coming out of this guy's mouth. <laughs> we got a Boston Homer over here. But the final, but the final, you know, issue I kind of have with the All Star Game recently, or the past couple of years, was the set score at the end in the fourth yeah, I think quarter. Stupid. I think you should mm. just let it play out till the mm -hmm. end, full, you know, twelve minutes. I missed the one eighty to one seventy five games. Yeah, They're fun. Because oh, yeah. now it's like now it's like one forty six because yeah, the, not even hundred. It's because each quarter stops at a certain score and then it's yeah, it's it's stupid. Wait, they're still doing it like that. I don't think they're doing it like that. They kept it the same way. Time I know they did it last year like that. Time out. They do who, whatever team wins donates to a specific charity. Which is great. That's amazing. I love that. That's I a love great that. thing that they picked up on. So that kind of plays the defense part into it. So you don't get that 180. Yeah. That's why I think you don't get those 200 plus score games in the All Star anymore. Can't tell me those weren't electric though. I mean, yeah. It, 
the kids first over you're right, over you're right you're right you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah no but at the end of the day at the end of the day i i don't like the point set the one year for kobe was great mm. but but you know well they'll do something for bill russell I'm yeah sure. they'll probably we'll get nice. something yeah but you know the all-star game's a couple weeks away mm -hmm. so you know we got a ways to go for that one so we're going to take a short break here on the extra point stay tuned for mm -hmm. more I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Extra Point. And recent weeks of fight in the UFC, we're switching a little bit gears. We haven't really talked about mm. UFC on this show much, mm. but a couple of weeks ago, it was announced that UFC legend, probably mm. one of the greatest of all time, John Jones is mm. returning to the ring for the first time in three years as he fights the number one heavyweight surreal gain on March 4th. I know I'm really excited. I don't know about you guys. I love... John Jones, I think he's, I, I truly believe that he is the best UFC fighter of all time. You could argue, you know, Habib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor, not McGregor. I don't like McGregor at all, but that's a conversation for another time. So, John Jones, finally back. What are your thoughts on this? Well, put some respect to the name. I mean, John Bones Jones, he's the man that started it all. Go. This guy... This guy has the, the uh, expertise in everything. You got Muay Thai, wrestling, striker. He can do it all. He is your Tom Brady of the UFC. He is your GOAT. You say what you want about him. Bring up the, the you know, the substance controls, abuse. The, controls, the illegal elbow is getting DQ'd in 2009. Jesus. I don't care. You look at it, the man's undefeated. God gave him a purpose on this earth to beat the living crap out of people. And he's going to do exactly that in March. I completely agree. I mean, you know, you look at John Jones, you look at what he's done. Mm. 26, then there's the 1, and 0, oh, and then with 10 knockouts. Mm. Like, he's just unbelievable. Mm. He's great. He's, you know, was involved in one of, if not the most important rivalry in the UFC, mm -hmm. you know, against mm -hmm. Daniel Cormier. Mm -hmm. I'm su it's super unfortunate that we will never get another fight from them again mm -hmm. because of Cormier's retirement. But Jones has done so much for the sport, mm -hmm. and it's so great to see that he's back. Mm -hmm. Three-year absence, last fight was in February 2020, where he took the W, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see Bones back in the ring against Gain, and I, I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. I, I agree, and I think the matchup is really good, too. We're, when you break down the matchup here, it's real Gain, 11-1, you know, uh, great record, um, Number one heavyweight fighter right now, you could argue in the UFC, against you got John Jones. It's it's kind of <laughs> like it's kind of like the teacher and the student, you know. 
you know, John Jones is the teacher in this situation. You got a David versus Goliath. You know, this guy, Surreal Gain, is going to try to prove himself going into it. Um, listen, I don't care who the hell you are. I don't care what you've done. You know, I'm going to show you how we fight now. You know, yeah. you're old school. I don't care. I think experience wins this fight. Absolutely. And I think, I think John Jones has that under his belt when Surreal Gain is just, just a striker. You know, he's very good at what he does. But the, again, the experience takes over here. And John Jones will show that. Um, in March yeah, on this fight in Las I Vegas. Agree, I agree with you. I mean, you mentioned it's in Vegas. I mean, mm -hmm. who doesn't love a nice Las mm -hmm. Vegas fight? I mean, that mm -hmm. gets everybody right in the great zone. Um, John Jones, you, you said it, experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, experience is literally everything in any sport. Most of the time, the youngin never comes out um, to win uh, the matchups. But John Jones, like, he, just, he does everything just so well. Mm -hmm. And Gaines just a striker. So I don't know how he's going to deal with the grappling and being on the ground. Uh, that might be what John Jones elects to do in this fight, but... Again, I think John Jones is going to be mad because he hasn't had an official fight in three years and he had all these people saying all this stuff about substance abuse. And is it true? Is it not true? Mm -hmm. It's still something that's going to fuel him. And I think he's going to come out angry and I think he's going to win this matchup. Now, now, who do you think has the most pressure going into this? Think about it. You're I, undefeated. I, I You're would John say Jones. Jones. I would yeah, say John Jones. Do you Jones Jones think John well. Jones has more pressure than Surreal Gain? Surreal Gain has nothing to lose, right? No. Yeah. So Absolutely in not. this situation, you could say John Jones has a lot more pressure on himself. He's coming back into the fighting world, you know, big name here. He knows how much he's worth to the game and what he's done, what you brought up. And you got a technically, quotation marks on it, an undefeated record on the line. And if I'm Cyril Gain, you're going in. The most dangerous thing in this world is a man with nothing to lose. So I'm very excited to see this matchup. I do stand, John Jones is favored to win. Uh, minus 135, but I, 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 I think it's going to be a competitive match. I, I don't think it's going to be a knockout. I think it'll go down to decision. What do you guys think? See, that's I was gonna I was gonna jump into the predictions. So, for for me, I think you know you got a long fight. At the end of the day, John Jones is going to come out swinging. Mm -hmm. So is Surreal Game. You know, like you said, both have you know John Jones has everything to lose. Surreal Game has nothing to lose, but he also has the number one spot to lose. So, you know, I think they're both going to come out swinging, but at the end of the day, I think John Jones is going to win in the second round by submission. Ooh, yeah. Ground game, baby. I like it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you look at Surreal Gain. <laughs> Gain's, Gain's just a striker. You get, you get Gain on the ground, and it's over. You got the Muay Thai yeah, expert yeah. Mm -hmm. in John Jones. He's going to submit him in the second round. That's going to be the yeah. factor if he can get him on the ground or not. And then at that point, you know, just play ground game after that in submission. I like that. I like that. What do you think? I think, I think John Jones is just going to kind of play with them. They're going to mm -hmm. go three rounds. He's going to try to tire gain out. And then third, you know, third uh, part of the match, third round, get that decisive blow, knock him out. John Jones takes the dub. I, I hope, you know, I hope John Jones wins. But that's going to do it for this episode of The Extra Point. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for next week. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. 